My doctor says I have Animal Crossing Amiibo Journey Cancer. It's a long story. You don't want to know. In order to get treated for it, I can't touch any games that start with another code and end with a recollection. So I got this. As the second best selling console of all time, the DS was revolutionary. It had another screen and a whole lot of useless stuff that people adored. While having two screens is already insane, they didn't stop there. Oh boy, Nintendo went crazy and added a touch screen. So what exactly happened after this? Hell, that's what happened. Why do you think we live in a world that shits on you and pays you to do that? So since there's nothing else to talk to, I guess we'll just jump into the game. Well, what the fuck? Hello, Matt. This is the second time you've broken into my house, what the fuck am I doing? You were just going to skip past explaining the origins of this game, weren't you? I think your video would be improved quite a bit if someone knowledgeable on this stuff assisted your Daiko drinking ass. Hey, I switched over to sunscreen and that's been a success, but I do want to be lazy, so... Talk. Now, who here has heard of this company sing? Yeah, that's expected. But for you informed, Sing was an independent video game developer founded in 1999 with the intent to create tons of unique experiences. They started with their first project, Glass Rose, in 2003, which was a Capcom published adventure game for the PlayStation 2, most famous for featuring a Japanese pop star as the lead character. This game flopped and never released in the West with only an European localization. But in 2005, Sing would be offered a chance to work alongside a small indie studio called Nintendo. They would create a story-based adventure game for a DS, using many features exclusive to a system, and it would be called... Another Code, Two Memories. Also known as Trace Memory in the West. This game was more successful than their previous outing, but proved to be one of the less popular story-based games on a DS. Nevertheless, it was well received and gained a sequel years later for the Wii, which was only released in Japan and Europe. This was a weird trend with Nintendo games during the 2000s. Why release this game in English if you're just gonna keep it exclusive to the British? It's unfair, I say! Anyway, Sing would create multiple other projects like Hotel Dusk and Will King Story, but they end up going bankrupt in March 2010 after releasing Last Window. And for many years, this seemed like the end for these games, being fated to disappear into obscurity. Until now. Now that that weirdo's gone, I guess I'll go into two memories after I waste more of your time. In the September 2024 Nintendo Direct, the first announcement we got was... Another Code Rare Collection. It's a collection of the Another Code series, and are also from the ground-up remakes. It includes two memories, and a journey into lost memories. But before I talk about literally anything important, I want to talk about... I want to say that I adore this title, and it's for the dumbest reasons. Another Code Rare Collection has so many low meanings to it. It's a collection of course, but it's a collection of remake games. So combine remake and collection, and you get recollection. Additionally, recollection works in the context of the game, since recollection means remembering something, and many of the characters have to remember what happened in the past. This may be the dumbest thing you've heard all year long, but it's something that I love, so you're gonna have to deal with it. This portion of the video has slight spoilers. Please proceed at your own caution. Two Memories begins with Ashley Mizuki Robbins, a 12-year-old who lost both of her parents at an early age, or only one, as we learn rather quickly. Ashley gets a letter from her father, telling her to meet him on Blood Edwards Island. She heads over there with her aunt, who's taken care of her ever since her parents left the land of the living. While on the island, her aunt goes missing for whatever reason. And now we have to find out where her aunt has gone and where her father is. Along the way, we meet a little ghost called Dee, not that Dee, who doesn't know anything or what his name is. All he knows is that he has an odd tattoo on his chest. So far, the story is insane, but that's a given since this is where the demo drops off. The story itself for Two Memories ain't anything special and isn't helped by the flat voice act. The game tries to present a somewhat emotional story. I mean, look at the damn box art, she's crying. But the story just feels a tad underwhelming because of the low budget. Even though the character models look awesome, they also feel disconnected. They all look fucking blind, and it's weird. Though, on the other hand, the lore is really intriguing. We get to learn more and more about what happened on Blood Edwards Island, and Dee's backstory, which I thought was surprisingly tragic for a DS game. I played on the DS for SimCity, not a tearjerker. There's so many questions in here that are never answered, which I would understand if people felt mixed on the game because of it. The antagonist? doesn't have a compelling motive at all, and a lot of the twists in the story are either given to the player or just not given at all. Giving the player surprise, that doesn't feel too surprising. The easiest example is Bill, who I immediately could tell wasn't Ashley's father. Having the camera linger on him for too long is a dead giveaway. 
Though if you're in the mood, there are also little origami cranes scattered throughout the mansion, which when scanned by the DAS, gives a mini log of something related to the area. It can range from the father making a stool that's crooked, to the father reading a book from one of the deceased family members on Blood Edwards. There's one in every room of the house, so I recommend you take the time to look for all of them. And one of them directly references another same title, which is pretty cool. The puzzles in Two Memories are somehow both simple, and I can't tell if it's because I'm dumb or it's because the developers made it in a dumb way. That said, I actually enjoyed the puzzles in Two Memories quite a bit. I'm not usually someone who's good with puzzles, which is weird considering that Zelda is one of my favorite franchises ever, but whatever. The puzzles here weren't that frustrating to the point where I didn't need to look them up online. For most of them. You thought that Breath of the Wild motion controlled puzzle was bad? You've seen nothing yet. The puzzles here are clever and a highlight. It's perfect for five-year-olds. One of my least favorite puzzles was this one particular puzzle room that was just annoying. It's in the study slash library room where it's very dark, dark in quotation marks. The game transitioned to a first person view and it's horrible. You move slowly, the camera's slow, and it took me an embarrassingly long time to progress. You want to know why? In order to interact with objects, you need to light them up, even though it's not that fucking dark. It's stupid, and instead of going first person, I think going top down like the original DS release would have been a really cool callback and just feel better to control. It would have been a nice easter egg for the original fans, but it's whatever. The game also crashed on me. It crashed on me and I had to suffer through like 10 minutes of text. It is a horrible day to be a fan of a company that doesn't know what quality of life means. And don't get me started on the puzzle where you had to take a selfie. There are a good handful of puzzles that make you feel smart, but only if you're bad at puzzle games. I can't imagine someone who's amazing at them loving this game, but I suppose that makes it a perfect game for me. So that's it for Another Code 2 Memories, the first game in this collection. This was the game that got the most attention in the marketing, and the next game in the collection, A Journey into Lost Memories, is a game we didn't really know about before launch, if you've never played it before, so... Let's just jump right in. Four years after Two Memories were released, we would get the sequel Another Code R, A Journey into Lost Memories, or nothing in North America. You have to remember, this was a time where Nintendo hated us North American fans, but hey, can you really blame them? A Journey into Lost Memories was released in 2009 to a mostly positive reception, though just as before, many more also thought that some of the elements dragged it down, giving it ultimately a mixed status. For years, it would be a hidden gem, thought to never be seen again. And obviously, it came back through the release of another code recollection. Big surprise, I know. A Journey into Lost Memories is a direct sequel that needs you to play two memories. I mean, you don't have to play it, but you'll enjoy A Journey into Lost Memories a lot more. And especially where it's less of a sequel and more of a part two, especially in Recollection, where no ending got two memories. It's just a transition. I was confused at first when you couldn't choose A Journey into Lost Memories on the main menu, but now that I've finished both titles, I can see why. Even though both of these titles are different games, they feel like slices cut from the same pizza. One slice may be smaller, but it still tastes the same, for better or for worse. Spoilers for A Journey into Lost Memories start now. A Journey into Lost Memories takes place two years after the events of Two Memories and takes place in Lake Juliet. Ashley arrives to visit her father, who's once again abandoned her. Now she has a new outfit that looks awesome, and she's grown a lot, as both a character and physically. A lot has changed, but at the same time, A Journey into Lost Memories has a lot of parallels with Two Memories, for better or for worse. This time, the story focuses more so on Sayoko, Ashley's deceased mother. And throughout the story, it's Ashley remembering her past, just like Dee did in Two Memories. While Two Memories had a small story with a small scope, I think that helped it, especially with its lore. A Journey to Lost Memories, on the other hand, attempts a bigger story that finishes the story that began with Two Memories, though there's lost potential here and there. The twist that comes later with Ryan not being real, and in fact he's an AI, is cool, but... Just barely. I mean, the storyline surrounding Liquid Memory and the fact that Ryan was essentially reborn with it is cool, but also kind of weird. Ryan in the story is tragic, but it feels like a less effective version of D. And later when Ryan is trying to get Sayoko reborn but in Ashley just feels underwhelming. Though I do have to say, erasing her memories did feel sad. But that's just it for the story. I also have to say, for whatever reason, I thought A Journey into Lost Memories would be a lot longer, like 10 hours longer, so color me surprised when I was at the end and I had to say goodbye to everybody. I know I do sound negative, but I really did enjoy a lot of A Journey into Lost Memories. I think it just bit off more than it could chew. I will say though, the way that A Journey into Lost Memory connects with two memories is pretty cool and a good second part to Ashley's fucking trauma. We finally get to see the truth about Sayoko and the another, and who the data was sent to at the end of two memories. 
While the puzzles in Two Memories left a lot to desire, I like the puzzles a lot more here. While there's still some bullshit ones, like having to use a remote control boat to get a suitcase and its acid control, but there was a genuinely genius one in the clock tower. I was stumped on it for the longest time, and in order to solve it, I had to pull out paper and a pencil to figure it out, and it was immensely satisfying. There's also another motion control puzzle here. But it ain't asked this time. I have no idea why I like this one versus the first one. Neurons get turned on when I need to put effort into something, god forbid. There's also one puzzle which I don't think is great at all, but made me laugh because of how much I was thinking about it. It's near the end and it has a kaleidoscope. You're supposed to twist and turn it to reveal words, and I actually did it. But then I actually looked back in the actual kaleidoscope and was so confused when no picture showed up. And then I realized, I already have the answer, and that I'm a dumbass. Our collection is a collection that both impresses me and disappoints me. I did enjoy my time overall, and I'm happy to try a new Nintendo game, but there's a lot that could have been better here. Two Memories has been given a huge facelift and is nothing like the original. While the jump with the journey into Lost Memories isn't quite as big, I think that's okay and it still does enough for me to enjoy these games. While there's a lot of jank in this collection, big lack of quality of life features, somehow, that gives this collection charm. These games are already small releases with a small budget, so you have to tone down your expectations. While I think Recollection looks really good, it's the art style that's doing a lot of the heavy lifting. A lot of the outdoor areas just do not look good at all. It's the insides that look really good. The camera's also just fucking horrible, and you need to manually tweak it to make it bearable. There's also the case of the voice acting, which hurts me. There's not one point in the collection where it ever gets good, which is not a good thing for games that are trying to tell deep stories. The delivery feels flat, though at least in A Journey into Lost Memories, it's helped by Ashley's new attitude, which I like a lot. These games are really funny because of the bad voice acting, so it's hard to be mad at the voice acting. Lately, we've been seeing a lot more of Nintendo smaller IPs coming out lately, and it's, and it's awesome seeing them try to revive them in one way or another. While the original release of Two Memories didn't sell horribly, it also did sell the best. But even with that, Nintendo decided to revive this dormant IP. And I have to say, though I do have to say, I think making this a full price release was a horrible thing on Nintendo's part. Since I don't feel like this was worth $60 at all. And hell, I paid $50 for it. If it was up to me, I think this should have cost $40. Though, even with all my bitching, I really hope this isn't the end. And that maybe one day we might see remakes of Sing's other titles, like Hotel Dusk or even a new game in this universe. I feel like there's a lot of potential here that hasn't quite been met with these two titles, and I feel like a third another code could be really, really cool that just happens to have Matthew in it. Please, I need more Matthews in video games. The symptoms have gotten worse. I told you not to get another code recollection. I didn't, I just got another code recollection. Two memory slash door memory. You're a fucking moron. Thanks, I try to up myself every month. Looks like I'm royally fucked.